Willkommen zu Mac for Musicians, dem Internet-TV-Magazin für Musiker. Wir hatten Gelegenheit, eine hausinterne Produktpräsentation bei Alesis auf Video aufzuzeichnen. Aus der Dokumentation haben wir die interessantesten Auszüge für Sie aufbereitet. Der folgende Beitrag zeigt die neuen Multimix USB 2.0 Mixer mit integriertem USB 2.0 Audio Interface. Alle Kanäle plus Stereosumme werden gleichzeitig in Auflösungen bis 24 Bit und 96 Kilohertz zum Computer übermittelt. Uh, introduce myself, I'm Jim Norman. I'm the Product Manager for Alesis. Uh, product Managers in our company basically are the people, we, we, we have a division and we have our product lines and I work in the Los Angeles uh, engineering office. Last winter NAM we introduced our USB 2.0 mixers. So we thought, well one thing we, the, the, we went to firewire mixers for about two years. Firewire mixers were pretty successful, um, but we found a couple obstacles with firewire. Let me just kind of talk about this. The USB 2.0 mixers are high resolution multi-channel mixers. In other words, if I have a 16 channel mixer, and I plug it in my computer, you get the 16 individual channels plus the main. So you get a total of 18 inputs that you see on Cubase. With the 8 channel mixer, you would see 8 plus 2, so you get a total of 10. So each one of these channels that you get a strip here, you plug in your microphone, you get the mic, all your adjustments again, plus your EQ is, is allowed to be used in that input strip that goes into Cubase or whatever, you know, GarageBand, whatever program you choose to use. Now we've added 24-bit up to 96K recording on the mixers. And then it's a standard USB 2.0 jack on the back here. Outputs, TRS, quarter uh, outputs, control room out, <coughs> as well as headphone out. So if you're using this and, and you want to monitor the control room out separately from that, so if you want to set it to Q and know it's coming up, you can have a separate mix on this. You can solo, you can uh, pre-fader listen, and Cubase LE. So, and we actually have changed over from regular Cubase LE to Cubase LE4. We're no longer just using uh, the older LE. Uh, the, the advantage is now we can use the software that uh, works very well with Vista, works great with the new Mac OS. The other version worked okay, but this works better. So that'll be in the box, Cub Cubase LE4. So you've got this great mixer with all the EQ effects and your mic freeze along with a, a multi-channel digital interface all in one mixer. Now why USB 2.0? A lot of people have asked this question recently. Well, first off, every computer that's now made has USB 2.0. My Mac, your PC, everything. Not every computer made has FireWire. And that was one of the things we found with our FireWire mixers. So, okay, if you, had, you wanted to get a FireWire mixer and you didn't have a FireWire port, what do you do? You buy a card, right? You have to buy either a PCI card or you have to get one of the little cards that goes in the slot. And then you hook it up and plug it in. The one problem that, that we have with those expansion cards, those FireWire cards, is the chipset they put on it. Uh, FireWire is not FireWire. FireWire is a, is a protocol made by AES. Great. The only problem is that FireWire cards and chips are variable. Some companies from China make them with a different chipset. You plug it in, you get dropouts, it doesn't see the device, it's all sorts of problems. So one of the problems we had from product support is someone would buy a great new mixer and say, it doesn't work, I can't get it to work. So I'm sorry, sir, what kind of card do you have? We have to do this whole configuration, did you do it right? Oh, sorry, you should get this kind of card, it's a better card. It's a headache, it's a problem for them. No one wants that. USB 2.0 ports are USB 2.0 ports. We don't have to worry about chipsets. The chipset we're using is inside the mixer. Now, a lot of people go, well, FireWire is the standard for professional audio recording. That's what we're told. We've been told that for a long time. The, the thing is, I think until up to recently, that was probably true. You know, I, that's why we put FireWire in our products. And then we found a really great company that developed a uh, a driver solution for USB 2.0 that was able to deliver, in, in, in fact, better response, you know, in terms of bandwidth for audio than we could get on FireWire 400. So we tested it, we checked it, and we found that with their driver we could make it work. We could run, we could run up to 16 or 18 channels at 96K into our computer with no dropouts or issues. 
Um, right now, let's say our FireWire device like the IO26, what it's doing is it's handling up to actually the 26 channels. And not only does it take eight analog, you know, uh, channel inputs, but it also takes two uh, uh, ADAP, okay, which is a digital signal, okay. Now, on top of that, it also takes SPDIF, which is another type of digital signal. So SPDIF, ADAP, analog. So what's happening here in this device is it's talking to a chip, which is called, it's called Dice 2. So it's made by TCAT, and they're made, it's a high-end technology. And one of the biggest problems when you're taking a chip, and it's getting all these different kinds of signals. You know, okay, this is one clock coming from analog. Here's two clocks coming from ADAP. <coughs> Here's another one coming down to SPDIF. So they're all coming down to this chip. And it's going, okay, I'm taking you, 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 and you. Now what has to happen is why it's taking all those signals is it has to keep the clock straight. You know, if you have the clock move a little bit in and out, what do you get? Jitter. Jitter. Good answer. Yeah, I like this guy. He's just, <laughs> you're in the bucket. <laughs> This causes what's called jitter. Jitter is a digital noise. And, and with, you know, you can hear it, it can suddenly be very prevalent, sometimes it can always be underlying inside that signal. So when we're taking all these clock sources and running into this chip, we're using the dice, it has a thing called JET, Jitter Elimination Technology, which in the previous FireWire products that are out there in the market, Bridgeco and all these other chips, and a little more technical, they have to take several different pro you know, chips and put them together and have them talk to each other. And they have to somehow keep the digital clock together. Because if they don't, you get jitter, right? Well, when they invented the dice chip, they took all these extra components and built it inside of one chip. They said, okay, we got an ADAP port built in, we got all these things, we can clock. And we can handle all these things with almost virtually no jitter at all. And what gives us the opportunity to, to handle all this kind of signal flow. Now, what we're doing on IO26 or a master control is very hard to do. It's probably something that USB 2.0 is not ready for. But if I'm only sending eight analog signals, or 18 analog signals, with no other kind of digital clocks to it, USB 2.0 is fine. It's not sitting there going, oh, that's ADAT, oh, that's SPDIF, oh, here comes analog, I gotta keep these straight. It's just saying, okay, these are all analog signals, I'm gonna turn them into digital signals. So USB 2.0 can handle the bandwidth. It's actually got more bandwidth than FireWire 400 does. So it says, fine, I'm going to take all your signals and run it in. There's no clocking issue. It's got one master clock and it's safe. Chipset. We're working with a, a Texas Instrument chipset with a very high-end proprietary driver. We've tested it. That's why it's taking so long to get this out. So we had to go through and test every computer <coughs> configuration with every type of OS, every type of DAW until we solved everything and saw it work right. Because we wouldn't release it to them. We're not sitting there trying to be confusing to you, but there's a reason why we go to USB 2.0 on this and still keep FireWire for other products, because they're doing some more difficult things to do. This is a new driver, it's a new chipset, it's a new way to work. What's got to happen is we have to, at Alesis, do some education. We have to do a lot more product education. That's why I'm here. That's why Ralph had me fly all the way from Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> so I could explain this.